Hi, my name is Queenie, and this is my story. I grew up a lonely child. I was bullied, and I felt ugly and misunderstood. I looked for love, significance, and security in the wrong places, and I felt like I was never enough. Because of this, I tried to look for my worth in different things, in my achievements, in my own performance, in trying to meet the expectations of other people, in romantic relationships that eventually broke my heart, in wealth, and in so many other things of this world. But it came to a point when everything and everyone disappointed me, even myself. And I fell into a deep depression when I was 19 years old. In the midst of that depression, I did a lot of reckless things to try to fill the void in my heart. I got into reckless relationships. I drank alcohol so that I could drown out the pain. I tried to do things so that I could feel like I belong. But the emptiness, the emptiness inside me continued. I even came to a point when I became an atheist. I stopped believing in God and I became very bitter and angry deep down inside. I really felt like no one truly loved and understood me. It came to a point when all of that depression led to despair and... The only escape I had was pornography. I became addicted to pornography at the age of 19, and it was one of the darkest parts of my life. Pornography is a very, very, very evil master. Like chains, you are never free. It gives you pleasure for a while, but eventually that pleasure dies down and you leave your left feeling guilty and ashamed of yourself. And that worsened my situation until I became suicidal. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't have any purpose. I became hopeless. In 2014, we tried to look for a cure for my depression. I went to five different psychiatrists, psychologists, psychotherapists, and all of these other professionals in the mental health care field. And they tried to find an answer. In the Bible, there's the story of the bleeding woman. She's been bleeding for 12 years, and she's spent all her money on doctors, but no one could find the cure until, until Jesus came into her life. One day in January 7, 2016, when I was at the end of my rope, when I had nowhere else to go, I was led to go to a hospital clinic. And in that hospital clinic, there was a doctor and a nurse. They were both women. And they asked me, what happened? What happened to you? And they listened to my story. For an hour, more than an hour, I just shared everything that was going on in my life. And I really felt listened to. They listened to me, you know, not just to reply, not just to give advice, but they were just there. Have you ever felt that way? That somebody is listening to you because they want to listen to you? That's how I felt that day. And I really felt loved. I felt loved. And because they listened to me sincerely, I was also willing to listen to them. After I shared with them my story, the doctor said, Queenie, can I diagnose your heart? And she told me, there is a void in your heart that no one and nothing can fill but God. There is an emptiness in your heart that not money, relationships, family, fame, social media likes, not achievements, not um, performance, academic performance, none of these things can fill that hole in your heart because it is a cross-shaped hole. It is a hole that only God can fill. And then they told me their story. They said there was a point in their life when they also wanted to end their lives, when they almost ended their lives, but God came to rescue them. And they shared with me the greatest rescue mission ever, and that is, God, our holy God, became a man, and he lived the life that we should have lived, 
And he died the death that we should have died at the cross so that he could pay the price for our sins so that we can be forgiven and cleansed. And he was buried and on the third day he rose again. He rose again so that he could give us new life and a new beginning. And the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, shall not be lost, shall not be in hell, but shall receive everlasting life. And everlasting life, according to the Bible, in John seventeen three, is that we may know God and Jesus, His Son, whom He has sent. So everlasting life is not just heaven. In the future, everlasting life is a relationship with God here now, not religion, but relationship. And that is when my relationship with Jesus began, January 7, 2016. From that point onwards, it was a journey with God. It wasn't a perfect or smooth journey. There were many times when I was depressed and discouraged, but because it's a journey, I realized. That because you're in a relationship, you know when somebody loves you, they don't give up on you. Love doesn't give up on you. And Jesus never gave up on me. Every time I would sink, I would fall, I would get sad and depressed again, He would lift me up. When I would become anxious, He would embrace me with His peace. And it's so true that only Jesus can give the peace that the world can never take away. So dear friend... If you do not have this peace in your heart, if you do not have hope in your life, if there is an emptiness in your heart that no one and nothing else could fill, not even a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever else it is that you have, I invite you today, come to Jesus. Call upon His name. Say, Jesus, I need you. I need a Savior. I need a relationship with you. I don't have a relationship with you. I want you to come into my life and change me from the inside out. I want you to be with me forever. In Jesus, you are no longer on your own. The love, the significance, the security that I tried to look for in the wrong places, I found in the one person who loved me and gave himself for me. You can have this hope as well. I pray that you do this today. I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you.